Okay, doing a little follow-up before I begin the next construction. Um, you saw in the video the track was turning there. When I looked up really close on the video, saw a small, there's a bit of jumping right here. And then when I got looking, if you can see, it's the darn sun. But the guides on the inside stick out. And I think what happened is the track slid a little bit over this direction. And then the guide was catching on these and caused it a little bit of jumping to happen. When the jumping happened, it uh, caused some resistance, which caused this side to try to stop. And the other side, of course, tried to had to turn, which bent the bar and kicked it out. So uh, I've already been looking at this one, seen how this was laid out or fit together. And originally I built it intentionally this way with the rubber the way it is and you can see there's a small gap between the you know, maybe you can't see I can't tell on the GoPro but there's it sticks out and the rubber sticks out so I think I might uh, reverse this so what'll happen the holes are off centered by a quarter inch so what'll happen is it'll put the rubber into there uh, shouldn't make a difference this is definitely sized correctly it'll make it so that the rubber sits really close to the edges of the drive wheel so I think that'll be okay I'll take the couple pieces of scrap that are left over from that this was the excess and I'll try building it together with some new pieces later before I work on the next track because I'll have to disassemble this whole track and reassemble it with a uh, uh, flipped over so anyways that was just a little summary of what happened or what I think happened. The introduction to this next video, part 13. Ah, well, here we are. Some work you guys haven't seen. Uh, we've ripped apart the, took the seat out. And uh, the plan is to mount the brake cylinders right here. So one brake cylinder right here, the other one right here, and then some rods that go pass underneath the seat, go to the bars that'll be used to control the steering. As you can see, the it's all disassembled. But functionally, all that's needed is the key, and it turns and starts, and you guys saw that. Um, what I edited out was actually spent some time <laughs> where you'd start disassembling and getting the brake cylinder out from underneath, and... Uh, of course disconnected the brake switch so i couldn't put it in gear before so i had to reassemble the brake switch so that's something i'll have to rig the brake switch up to work with one of the pull braking sides probably the left one because your right hand will be running the shifter just so that you have some braking applied before you can put it in gear and at idle it shouldn't matter there's so much resistance with the tracked system that idling it won't it won't move it'll you need to give it some gas to get it to move I think so I think it should be okay anyways gonna re remove the brake pedal I'm gonna take the uh, other master cylinder out and then uh, the next the step first is fabricate a bracket that runs off the seat posts so you can see we got some plates started here I'm gonna put them like that get them to here and then we're gonna have a some brackets just to hold the brakes in and then um, run the rods across I'm gonna fab up a two pulley style breakings here one each one will be uh, like right about here I don't know, can you see? yeah right about here and here the two rods i'll get some three quarter inch pipe for that so anyways so once i get the bracket fabricated for this then i'll show you that setup okay so we got a little bracket fabbed up there you can see um we're going to mount the brake cylinders off of that Something like that that should sit one back here a little bit and the other one a little bit further forward just to offset them and make them closer together. So then I've started fabbing up a bracket. So this will be like so. Um, the idea is here I can adjust it yet. I haven't finished the bracket, but just cutting the holes. So 
so. Well, make another one and then uh, line it up on the on that main bracket, position them, tack weld them, pull it all out, weld it up. All right, got a bracket. We just finished welding it up and then uh, putting some putting in some water, cool it off. Seems pretty good. Uh, I don't know where the seat's gonna clear. I think it'll be okay. May have to keep the seat forward, but I don't know. it is what it is, I guess. Well, that's one there. Other one, let's try it out. Oh, yeah, you can fit the nuts on the outside of that. This bracket here, I think I'm going to add a little uh, support to it. You can see it's a little wobbly. I'll take it uh, wobbly this with this direction. I'll take and run a little bead, a little uh, piece of bar like this. For support um, this one is a little different and that it ended up going on the side of the uh, down here so it gets support this direction from uh, this piece so it's pretty strong I don't think we need to uh, adjust it all right so I'll uh, put a little put a little bracket on there a little piece of flat bar or a piece of round bar scrap and uh, yeah, I guess we got that good. The next step will be bolt these in place and start fabricating the um, steering arms. Okay, got the uh, bracket finished. You can see I added a little, hopefully you can see, I got it on low light, but there's no bracket there. Pretty strong. So, uh, just looking at this setup, this is definitely going to be in the way the the chair. So uh, yeah, the light doesn't look very good on YouTube there on the camera. So what I'm going to do is uh, I'll run the rod low, and then I'll just do a 90 up to it, and then uh, put a guide here so that the rod stays in the guide. So it slides in and out that way, puts the force. We need about, if you think with an arm, with those bars, I've got three, three quarter inch black pipe. With those bars, you've got about maybe 20 pounds of force. Maximum you'd want to have to pull with leverage, given the amount of distance that this has to travel, this piston. I can't push them in by hand. It's probably only an inch but uh, so if we go five to one so there's five inches of travel on the top one inch travel on the bottom and then that amount of force would then be divided by five so at 20 pounds you get a hundred pounds of force and considering that each one of these only runs one brake caliper at a time not both hopefully that's enough force your foot puts out your leg can put out probably 
easily four times what your arm can pulling, but the leverage on this is a lot larger. The leverage on the foot pedal is about three to one, uh, maybe a little less, so two and a half to one. You can't see it, it's way up underneath the, how, how it's designed, but yeah, so about two and a half to one. So we're doubling the torque, uh, the leverage we get by taking a longer arm. So hopefully that's enough. Anyways, I'm going to put the chair in and uh, see how that all fits. And then I'll, just to set the chair on, then we'll work on uh, getting the brackets built for the rods to transfer the uh, force in and out. I took the chair and stuck it in, hooked up the power, and uh, it was hitting where it was sitting, so I just uh, adjusted the distance. It was about a half inch of clearance from where the chair sits right now. So basically, once I put it in the chair permanently, I'll just leave it disconnected so nobody can adjust it. And I accidentally hit the brakes. Then, uh, okay, so I got some progress. Built a built my adjuster bars, my uh, brakes. Yeah, worked out not bad. I ran out of propane on my uh, torch. I was bending these tubes by hand, and uh, well, unfortunately, yeah. Once I ran out of propane, couldn't heat it up anymore. I actually ended up uh, kind of messing it up. As you can see, one of them's bent further than the other. I didn't notice. I thought I double checked them, but <laughs> anyways, not the end of the world. So built this base with adjustable stops to stop the bars. This will be stuck in like that and then welded in. So just enough room for the uh, Probably over there for your foot to get on the gas pedal. And uh, yeah, looks pretty good, I think. The, uh, yeah, I kinked the bars a little bit when I bent them, but given how heavy duty these are, shouldn't be an issue. So now I've got to uh, clean out uh, more carpet and then, uh, yeah, I don't know for sure. I guess I'll bolt that down that bracket and uh, then off of these bars here um, well, right about here I'm going to attach a clamp on adjuster adjustable for height so it's just clamping on it goes up and down this will be our generate the force that travels back to the to the brakes so you can see the brakes sitting there so yeah looking pretty good so yeah so next step so next video I think this is enough for one video is I'll get that mounted to the floor get the clamps made <clears throat> get the uh, rods built and then the rods have to go right against the carpet because there's not much clearance underneath the seat and then build a guide for the one rod I think the other one can, can just go down and then bend up a little bit with the amount of force. I don't think it'll bend the rods, three, three eighths rod. So it should be okay. Anyways, I'll catch you all next video. Hopefully we'll get the brakes installed and I'll get some hose and we'll get the brakes uh, plumbed. And then we can give them a test. Thanks for watching, everybody. If you have any comments or questions, just leave them in the comment section.